Welcome to video number two. In the first video, we introduced the Mandelbrot set, and in particular, we focused on orbits. In this video, we're going to focus on the Julia sets. We're going to see how they are calculated and how they relate to the Mandelbrot set. The relationship is actually very fascinating. If you love the Mandelbrot set, make sure you watch the video right through until the end to learn how the Mandelbrot set seems to have a memory of its own. Anyways, let's get started with this video. Now, you can technically have a Julia set using many different formulas, but today we're only going to focus on one particular formula, z equals z squared plus c. As we saw in the last video, this is also the formula for the Mandelbrot set. So what is the difference? Well, whether we generate a Mandelbrot set or a Julia set depends on how we set the initial values of z and c. The process of iteration is the same. Recall that when we calculated the Mandelbrot set, we set z equal to 0, and c to the point of interest. To build a Julia set, we just make c a constant. Unlike the Mandelbrot set, c remains constant over the whole image. z is initially assigned to the point of interest. There is actually a whole Julia set image for every value of c. If I change the value of c, I get a new image. The idea behind a Julia set is actually more fundamental than the Mandelbrot set, and the idea of creating Julia sets is much older. With the Julia set, what we are doing is actually mapping how a complex function behaves. Let me stop here and clarify some terminology. For our function z equals z squared plus c, if I wish to refer to the whole black area, I'll call it a filled Julia set. The Julia set is actually only the edge of the black area, not the whole thing. Its mathematical definition is the set of all points where the nearby orbits diverge, no matter how close that nearby orbit is. Actually, it's not that important for our purposes. But it's worth realising that if a mathematician says Julia set, he has quite a specific meaning. And that meaning might be a little different from what you were expecting if you learnt about the Mandelbrot set first. Okay, now back to the fractals. The Julia sets always have a two-way rotational symmetry around the origin. We will see why this is the case in a later video, when we build a filled Julia set step by step. Additionally, there are two types of Julia sets. The first type is where the whole filled Julia set is connected. In this case, the origin or zero is also part of the filled Julia set and is coloured black. The other type of Julia set is simply dust. It is broken into infinitely many small pieces. We don't find Julia sets that are broken only into a couple of pieces. They are always whole or they are dust. Now a guy named Mandelbrot was very interested in which values of C are connected Julia's and which ones are dust. So he grabbed out a massive IBM computer and did some programming. Let's have a look at what he found using a more modern perspective. Because there is an image for each value of c on the complex plane, we can plot a series of images on the complex plane like this. The center of each individual image is located at its corresponding value of c. It's possible to make these images a little smaller so that we can fit more onto the screen. Now watch what happens when I make them really small. We are looking at a bunch of small images, and all of a sudden we can see the Mandelbrot set. That is no coincidence. If I zoom into the centre of each of those little images, the picture becomes even clearer.
When Mandelbrot created his first image, which was only made with ASCII computer text, he was studying the behaviour of the Julia sets. The Mandelbrot set is actually a map showing where the Julia sets are connected and where they are not. If we pick any value of C from within the Mandelbrot set, the corresponding Julia set will be connected. If we pick a value of C outside the Mandelbrot set, the corresponding Julia set will be infinitely disconnected. And this is actually the definition of the Mandelbrot set. You can render the Mandelbrot set this way because it just so happens that all the connected Julia sets have a filled or black center pixel. Here is the animation one more time so that you can see what is happening. The Mandelbrot and Julia sets are related in more ways than that. It just so happens that when we explore deep into the Mandelbrot set, we find shapes that are very similar to Julia sets. This is particularly obvious when we zoom close to a mini Mandelbrot. Locally, the orbits of the Mandelbrot set are behaving a little like Julia sets. And I guess this is not too surprising because the iteration process is so similar. We call them embedded Julia sets. The embedded Julia sets are always connected because the Mandelbrot set itself is connected. However, there is one big surprise. At the centre of every embedded Julia set, we find a mini Mandelbrot. The mini Mandelbrot is found at twice the depth as where we found the embedded Julia set. So deep embedded Julia sets have even deeper mini Mandelbrots at their centre. The next big surprise is that inside these embedded Julia sets, the Mandelbrot set remembers where it came from. To see what I mean, let's zoom into the Mandelbrot set. Starting with this embedded Julia, take notes of the features I pass. We will start by zooming to the edge of the embedded Julia for a little. Past about six spirals. Then we will zoom at the tip of a line. Now at the middle of a line, passing by some embedded Julias. Finally, let's dive into the centre of an embedded Julia set and try to find a mini Mandelbrot. It's interesting to examine the sequence of shapes that we will now pass. Firstly, we see the edge of our original embedded Julia, and we zoom past about six spirals, except now that there are two of them, roughly rotational symmetrically arranged. Then we find our line, but again, two of them. Next we find where we zoomed at the centre of the line, but it is split in two, forming a cross, and we cruise past several embedded Julia sets. So everything up to this point was repeated, but we had two-way rotational symmetry. If we were to repeat the last little bit of two-way symmetry, we would get four-way symmetry, and so that is what we find. Here is a four-way symmetrical version 
of our first embedded Julia shape. Our lines follow. I'm sure by now you're getting the idea. Next we have eight-way symmetry and it replays again. Then 16-way symmetry. But you may be noticing that the distance to each symmetry increase is halving. 32 and 64-way symmetry follow. Eventually the symmetry will become infinite and everything collapses into a mini Mandelbrot. But I can assure you that if you look very close to the Mandelbrot set, the symmetry keeps doubling at its edge. 1024, 2048 and so on. Let's have a closer look. And there is our original embedded Juliet with about six spirals, arranged precisely in lines around the mini Mandelbrot. Now, if you are clever about where you are zooming in, you can use this remembering property to create some artistic shapes. I'll place some links in the description to a couple of videos that do this. Before I wrap up this video, I'd like to show you that it is actually the Julia set that holds these properties. Although we find it in the Mandelbrot set, it seems to be a feature of the Julia sets themselves. I will take C close to the inside of the mini Mandelbrot and render the corresponding Julia set. Let's have a look at the result. That's it for this video. In the next video, we will be building Julia sets step by step using a very interesting animation I have developed. This will give you a visual understanding as to why the Julia sets are rotationally symmetrical and why they form the shapes they do.